What's up, everybody? Hope everybody's still doing well. Today, I'd like to focus on this recording. This is uh, This I Dig of You by the Deep Blue Organ Trio, and we're going to uh, highlight Bobby Broom's solo um, on this recording. And uh, this was released, I think, in 2007. And uh, the Deep Blue Organ Trio consisted of Chris Foreman, um, Greg Rockingham, and uh, Bobby Broom. And um, I really I really dug uh, Bobby's solo on this uh, recording of This I Dig of You, so we're gonna go through it. And like always, um, I'll play it along with Bobby and then break it down uh, in the tutorial. So here we go. <laughs> So let's go through the choruses one by one. Let's start off with this. Um, it's, as you all know, as I always say, there's there's tons of fingerings that you can use. This is the one that I found to be the easiest based off mm -hmm. the relationship to the chord and the scales in the chord. So um, whenever you are transcribing, I would encourage to um, start your fingerings based off of the chord, um, the, uh, the scales of the chord. Mm -hmm. As we know here, it's B-flat major. So we got, um, I'm basing my transcription uh, fingerings off of the fact that most of it, B-flat is, you know, um, right here as far as the a good fingering. And it's in the middle of the neck, so you can get to, um, you know, you can get to the different registers uh, as the solo goes on. So let's start off chorus number one. Here's chorus number one. So it starts off with like a little blues riff. Kind of hammering on. Then he's gonna go. Chorus number one. Let's go through that one more time. Right here, 
right here, of course, the chord changes in this I dig of you. It's a 2 5 and B major, so that's why he's gonna go. Slides back into that B flat. The, slides back into the B flat two five is what I'm saying. Cause you got um, the two five on this I, this I dig of you. Back to B flat two five. So. Kind of like a little uh, uh, descending motif, motif. Then he goes. Then it's. All right, here's course number two. So we're gonna come off of chorus one. Then we're gonna go into chorus number two, starts like this. I'm bending this finger. Real hip lick, cause it has a lot of consonants and dissonance happening. Then he slides up. Then he goes. Kind of does a little trill right there. Then he jumps up. Down the B major scale, essentially, with a little chromatic. But we're going down the B major. Right here, B major scale. Down the B flat major scale, essentially. Because you got the two fives. He's just pretty much going down, um, playing the ideas, uh, half step a piece, but. Then he goes. idea but he's just playing Bobby Broom is is an awesome guitar player because just like George he mixes the blues and the jazz and he blends it very well so it's like you don't get too much um, even like so for instance with the line I was saying you know how he that's that's a very jazzy modern jazz line but then he'll still go back to just the blues, which when you when you're able to masterfully blend the two together, that's when you've pretty much uh, you know you've mastered mastered the guitar as well as in my opinion you've mastered jazz because jazz is is a conglomeration or or um, amalgamation of blues, jazz, um, soul. In my opinion, that's that's jazz. Um, so like classical forms of classical music, like classical blues, it's just all the elements. And that's when, when you're able to weave in and out of those, um, then to me, you've become, you've mastered, you know, you've, you've mastered the music or the language. Um, but at any rate, I, I digress, sorry. So we're gonna go to chorus three right now. Chorus number three, we're gonna start like this. Then we're gonna change.
So let's go back. Right here, I'm playing the same E. I'm not playing the same E, I'm sorry, I'm playing E. Right here. sliding there. One quick thing to note, as you can see or as you can hear, some of them, some of these notes, I'm just sliding um, and just picking down or up, not picking each, each note. And if you really study Bobby, he does that a lot. Like he, he may not pick every note just for, um, it gives it, I guess it doesn't sound as stiff if you were to pick all the notes, even though sonically they may be correct, it wouldn't sound or feel the same. So it's all about the feel um, as you play through these solos. Like if you take a artist like Pat Martino, who does play every note um, and with the same level of uh, attack or whatever you can you you hear you know Pat Martino when you hear him you know George Benson when you hear him um, but Bobby has a tendency to 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 slide a lot he may not pick every note which makes him unique in his own right and it gives him his own sound um, so let's get back so we got sliding up then he's gonna go let's get that one more time make sure you guys have that how the third chorus ends going into the first uh, fourth chorus so we got another blues riff so it you can hear he if you notice each at the beginning of each chorus <clears throat> he's kind of going taking it to to blues bill but then going back into more of a modern jazz approach where you're playing more outside, um, which is which is amazing how he's weaving in and out of that. Okay, here's chorus number four. And the last chorus, we're gonna come off of uh, chorus three. Let's come off of uh, chorus three again.
Right here, he's just doing a pull up. That's the whole, uh, that's pretty, that's the fourth chorus and the last chorus of the solo. Let's go back so we can get all of this. So we start here. Right here, we're gonna go. Then we're gonna go. really quick um, as, as a summary or a wrap up to this whole solo and uh, video one quick thing to note first of course you need to low to learn uh, you need to learn the chord changes to this I dig of you and it's not nothing to it I'll just go through it really quick you have B flat major 7 C minus 7 D minus 7 C minus 7 B flat major 7 C minus seven, then you can have a two five and E flat. Then you're gonna have E flat major seven, the quick two five, minor two five, of course, and D minor. Then you're gonna have a G seven. Then you're gonna have this C sharp or D flat minor seven to G flat or F sharp. Then you're gonna have this two five, and this is of course two five in B major, except it doesn't resolve. Two five in C. I'm sorry, two five in B flat on C minor seven. But this one actually does resolve, of course, going back to the top. So same thing, B flat major seven, C minor seven, D minor seven, C minor seven, B flat major seven. C minor seven, two five or minor two, um, F minor to B flat seven, E flat major seven, E half diminish to A seven alt, D minor seven, G seven, C minor seven, F, and that's the whole song. So I want you to keep that in mind as you go through um, the solo so that you can kind of start developing relationships between how Bobby is approaching the changes relative to the harmony. Of course, you know, as you learn, there's different ways to play a B flat major seven, you know. So try to imagine all of the uh, possibilities as he's going through how he's relating the lines that he's playing to the chords, whether it be here, whether it be here, whether it be here, whether it be here, you know, you don't, you understand what I'm saying? So that will help you. And that's just, that goes for all of just transcribing in general, always as you're going through, uh, trying to find ways to finger the transcriptions, the easiest, I always, um, try to imagine the chord relationship to the scale. So it helps me even as I'm playing, um, you know, playing my own solos. And also 
if you are very uh, much a Bobby Broom fan, as I may have said earlier, just pay attention to how he's articulating his, uh, his solos. Like I said, he doesn't necessarily pick every note. He's sliding, um, you know, doing glissandos, pull-offs, and all of that, which, you know, is very much uh, uh, his own stylistic prerogative. But, um, but I would encourage you if, you, if you're trying to capture that in your playing, just pay attention to those little nuances because they make the difference, absolutely make the difference. And playing stiff versus playing soulfully. So I hope that helps. Um, if you have any emails or comments or questions, just shoot me an email at rodharrisjr at gmail.com and or...